Hey, I'm Nick Meter from BS Free Spirituality. I've been wanting to make a video about the subject of the shadow, as it's called. A few times recently, people have essentially diagnosed me as having some issue with my shadow or not looking at my shadow enough. Maybe there's something from your childhood you need to look at. Now, if you're not familiar with that term, if it's new to you, it comes from the work of Carl Jung, a Swiss psychologist who was extremely influential in the 20th century. Carl Jung departed from the Freudian model essentially by saying that if we're going through something challenging, if we're showing signs of distress or what Freud would call neurosis, that it's not necessarily best to look at it as a disease. Instead, Jung looked at everything that a human goes through as meaningful. Now, Carl Jung also came up with a model for the human psyche that included this concept of the shadow. In simple terms, it's the part of ourselves, our psyche, our subconscious mind that we either can't fully see or we have some resistance to seeing. So in a simple sense, when it comes to self-development, obviously there's some benefit in looking at the shadow. Because whether you talk about self-development, healing, enlightenment, any of these things, they involve getting to know and becoming more at peace with all different parts of ourselves. The problem is that we have a lot of armchair psychologists in the healing and self-development world these days who are also not aware about power dynamics. So very often I hear someone say, this could be a shadow issue of yours. Maybe you'd like to look at it. Now this is assuming that we understand another person's process. It also assumes that they're open to our advice. And I've seen this in the world of psychotherapy too. Even though somebody does go into a psychotherapist's office looking for some guidance, it doesn't necessarily mean that the therapist's viewpoint or beliefs are going to help the client. If I think I have some insight into another person's process or their shadow, then it's my responsibility to ask them if they're even open to my perspective. If I just dump on them my views, then first of all, I'm doing that without their consent. And secondly, I'm not being aware of the power dynamics there. I've seen this in self-development groups in spiritual communities where leaders will systematically break down a person's sense of just being okay in themselves and, the, and in their identity by over and over again saying things to the effect that there's something that they need to look at in their shadow. It's not okay to tell somebody they have a shadow issue without their invitation. Most of us in this culture have already been through enough shit that we are healing from, let alone to walk into a self-development space or a spiritual community and have to encounter more of these messages that there's just something wrong with us, which is essentially a shame script, if you think about it. Not only might we have something subconscious going on, but now there's something wrong with us for not being able to look at it and fully understand it. So goes the implication of a statement like that. And ironically, in many of these cases where somebody's issuing a shadow diagnosis, they have some trigger happening that they're not willing to look at. Now I'd like to give people the benefit of the doubt and believe that their intentions are pure, that they would like to support people in seeing more of what's under the surface so that that person can live a more fulfilling life. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. And as I proceed with this BS Free Spirituality project, part of what I'm going to be teaching and offering is what I would call spiritual self-defense training. So anytime we are in a situation where our beliefs, our identity, and our perception of reality is under question or has the possibility to change, it's important to be grounded in our bodies about what feels right for us at any given moment. Now that doesn't mean we need to react and yell at someone and tell them to get out of our business necessarily unless we've already set some kind of boundary and they're not listening to that. Now because it can have the effect of shaming or putting down, maybe we won't be resourced in that moment to be able to use something like nonviolent communication and express assertively that in that moment we're just not open to it. Maybe the only choice will be to walk away. Only you can know what's right for you and I'm not going to tell you the only way to handle a situation like that because then I would be doing the same thing as the armchair psychologist. But look out for this as you go about the spiritual self-development communities that you're in. And I invite you to examine whether there's a correlation between a collection of power and the use of these kind of statements of shadow diagnoses. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I hope you keep it BS free.